Hello everyone and happy holidays. Today we're going to be looking at how to create abilities. We're going to have an overview of the entire ability creation system. Now before we get into this, I just want to make clear, this is not the final UI. You're going to see some things move around here. Most notably, you may see the viewport controls there at the bottom left hand corner moved over to the right hand side um, where you're going to be able to control them regardless of the tab that you're in, kind of like they are now, but they won't move around. However, all of the mechanics are actually already here and we're going to go over them one at a time and we're actually going to see all of the mechanics inside of the uh, logic, all of the tools, everything. We're not going to get into how to min-max too much or into all of the details of each mechanic because that would take a very long time. But we're going to just touch on them all briefly so that you can start planning out your abilities. So grab your favorite eggnog. And if you're watching this outside of the holiday season, grab your very unseasonal eggnog and relax because this is going to be a while. So here, what we're looking at right up front is the basic uh, factors of an ability. So you're going to see action cost, which is your AP consumed to activate the ability. You can also toggle it to become passive, which means it's not going to have charge time, cooldown, uses per battle or range. It's just going to be something that activates at the beginning of your turn every time automatically and without an effect. This is just an easy way to have something happen without really intruding on the game too much, but it gives you a lot of flexibility. So we'll adjust the action points. Let's just say three. The charge time is kind of like a cast time. And this cast time here is just basically going to be up to three rounds. It'd be very difficult to get that off, but you could, and it'd be very powerful. Uh, the cooldown is basically just going to be, so if you have a cooldown of two, you wouldn't be able to use it on the first round, you'd be able to use it on the second. You wouldn't be able to use it on the third, you'd use it on the fourth. You can also have a cooldown of three. Haste affects that cooldown, so if you have a lot of haste, you'll actually be able to use a two cooldown ability every turn. And you have uses per battle, which go up to three and can be modified actually up to more than that um, through in-run stuff. But default, it's uses per battle are zero, which means infinite. You can use it as many times as you like. Next, we get to the range. The range is a slider and you can have, you know, a range of numbers within the range. Or you can set it to a flat, let's say four, so you'd have to be four tiles away. If you bring it down to zero, that means you can activate on yourself as well. Um, a zero range ability can be useful for area of effect as we're about to see. And then we have these two toggles which may uh, again appear different l later on but ignoring obstacles makes range obviously a lot more expensive because you can fire over your friends or over props and then you have your uh, range is a straight line um, which we're basically uh, going to more, more or less rename straight line only or something to that effect what it means is you can only use it in a kind of a cardinal direction, left, right, up, down. You can't use it diagonally and or like a, you know, like a knight would move in chess or anything like that. So next in the area of effect, we're going to see all these little tiles that you can toggle and you'll see them come up on the card as well. If I toggle AE ignores uh, obstacles, then that means that whatever the blast point is, that little movable uh, if you can see it there, that tiny little arrow that I'm moving around, that's the origin. As it spreads from the origin, if it encountered an obstacle, if this wasn't toggled, the, the effect would be blocked. And if not, then it'll keep going. So it's kind of like if I throw a grenade right on top of somebody, he takes all the frag and you know dives on the grenade and that's it. But if it's like some kind of uh, lightning storm, well, that wouldn't make any sense. So it would ignore obstacles. And if you're Worried about why it says AE instead of AOE. Uh, it's just something that my brother and I, we say AE sometimes because we don't have time for the O. But uh, we'll probably change it to AOE before uh, we launch there. This is just kind of, you know, developer-y, programmer -y type stuff for now. So next we're going to move on to the logic. This is the actual meat of the card. This is what the card does. So you hit this little plus button. And we're going to just really quick, just to see what, what's going on here, I'm going to add damage. So there I'm dealing air or lightning damage of 128. And right beneath it, under modify damage action, I can do all kinds of things. Change it to magical, change it to earth damage. And then this is something we're gonna get into in a little bit, but you can set fields and traps here. 
So I'll just briefly cover it. I guess traps are something that are going to trigger one time. So somebody walks over a trap, they trigger it, that's it, it's gone. A field stays. So you can push two, three, four targets, however many you want, through that field. And every time that a, a, a target starts on the field or walks through the field, they will have the effect. So you have all of the choices down there. We'll bring it back to normal target. You can add your variance. That's just going to basically keep the average of the damage more or less the same, but it's going to make it so that there is a, a variance in the damage. And then you have a duration. This is for your dots. It's also going to work, you know, damage over time. It's also going to work for your hots, healing over time. Um, and of course, all of your statistic buffs and debuffs. Delays means it's not going to happen this turn. It's going to happen next turn or in two turns, etc. These are all things that are going to affect the potency of your ability. You know, these delays and durations. Uh, if you increase the duration, it's going to do more damage, as you can see. And the delay will also increase the damage. So this is just a point I'm going to make that I think most users will know at this point, but I just want to make it clear. All of these things are automatically balanced no matter what we do here. You're going to see the effects right away. So if I add, let's just say, a, another action. Let's just do uh, a statistic action. So right now what this ability would be doing is doing 192 damage and 106 power. This is a buff to the target. If I remove this, it does 128 less. And that is because if I'm trying to hurt somebody and buff them at the same time, they're kind of the inverse of one another. So this right here is called a scope negative. If I wanted to make it a static negative, I can do that too. I can set it to self and there it's no longer a negative because I'm buffing myself and I'm damaging the target. But if I set it to a debuff, this now turns red. As you can see, the power is uh, the minus 19 power is red. And that is a static negative. That means it's going to be bad all the time because I'm going to debuff myself 19 power for a turn in order to deal a little bit extra damage. So that's how the negatives work. Um, you can add multiple negatives and multiple positives to a card. There are four slots in total here, um, as we're going to see. And so I'll just demonstrate that real quick. So we'll add, and I'm going to go into what these are in just a second, but we'll add, let's say, uh, a cumulative, uh, let's just say AP. <clears throat> So I can drag and drop. These are also going to affect things. I can also turn it into a reaction. Um, let's say a health reaction on damage reaction. So, you know, not that this ability is making too much sense, but I'm just demonstrating here that you can have a react, you can have a condition, and you can have two effects, or you could have four effects. So you could have a condition and three effects. The point is you have four slots, and the only thing that you can't do is add more than one reaction. The reactions are one at a time. Now, the thing that you can do here is in order to get rid of it, I can drag it and remove it from the, the panel and that'll take care of that. I can also alt click to double this and now this is a, an easy way to just take that damage and split it between earth and air. Or I can hit the minus and clear it out. Finally, we have the cosmetic. Uh, here you can just select an image. Um, so, you know, we can do damage type air. You can mo modify how the image appears on the card here by moving it around. Um, you can actually even flip access, uh, do all sorts of neat things. Our abilities will look pretty good on the card because they're designed to be on the card, but if you just pull a random image, it may not. So this is a, a nice, useful tool. And then here you can select your uh, ability media. It'll display the ability media right away for you. Here I gave somebody a little present and it goes back. That's what that ability media control is for. You can just play it here. You can change the uh, ranks, the entities using it, et cetera, et cetera. It's just a little bit of control so you can see how your ability is gonna look. And finally, you have the tints. And the tints are just for your borders here and for the trim. So these are just completely optional cosmetic stuff. But let's go back to the meat and potatoes over here. Um, you know, uh, oh. And you can name your ability, that's also important. Um, but let's go back into the uh, meat and potatoes over here. And we're going to go sort of one at a time here. We're going to start with hurt because that's probably the most common stuff. So the damage action is just what you would think. It's just damaging. 
The damage percent action that came afterwards is just a percent of, it, of HP. Then the kill action is a chance to kill. It's like a chance to do 100% HP. And so obviously it's going to be a little bit harder to do that. But uh, it's pretty useful if you start putting a lot of conditions and restrictions on it. You can actually get away with it. And it's a, it's a nice way to go around things that are, for instance, that have a harm shield or something like that. And you can just siphon health. You could also have life siphon and just deal damage. But here you can just do a, a, a siphon health action. That means you're going to damage and heal yourself. And then you have transfer damage action. So that's like the burden ability that just whenever you get hit, you're actually transferring the damage to the target. Up here in, in the create, you have clone, which is basically just going to create a copy of the entity that is targeted. That means if you got a goblin in front of you, you clone that goblin. Bam, you got another goblin that's fighting on your team now. You have a copy ability action. This is the last ability that was used. Um, by the target. So if they just used a hack and you use a copy ability, you'll get a copy of that ability card that you can now use. You can now hack or chop or whatever, whatever the last ability was used. Form duration is to increase the duration of summons and transforms. Give ability. You can grant any ability. This is a more complicated one, um, but you can actually also create lists. You can do it at random. Um, so here you would be able to select from a list of all of the abilities, abilities that you create, in fact. <clears throat> so that would be, uh, if you leave it blank, you'd give a local ability that's based on your surroundings. So just from the level, other, other entities in that level use these abilities, they'll be added to the pool and you'll randomly grant them that ability. You can always, on most of these things, uh, change everything that you'd wanna change about them. For instance, the setting a fixed duration or not. Um, you can actually give multiple abilities in one go so it's it's quite flexible uh, now let's go back to actions create so now we have the mimic that's like a transform version of clone you're gonna target uh, an enemy and you become that enemy resurrect is to resurrect fallen allies uh, that means they're completely defeated you bring them back to life at a certain percentage so here you know you have 61 percent chance um, to revive ally at one percent HP if I went back here and I started cranking this up you know, I'm definitely going to revive them with 10, 10 AP and up to 72% uh, uh, HP. So this is using, I, I, want, I want to make clear that this right here, the, the actual uh, card, is using this character's statistics. So if we were to go back here and we were to change this to, let's just say, um, spirit, or just to do light and magic. Right, and so now we're going to change the entity um, that is using this to uh, Claire. So immediately you can see that she can revive an ally much better than Magnor can. Uh, so let's see how um, House would do. So not as good. And so here you can see how the particular character that you're working on is actually going to use the ability. So you can tune it to the character uh, or the enemy and uh, also very importantly is <clears throat> that you can uh, come in from the character that you're actually editing, edit his, his or her ability, and you'd be right here looking at them using their ability. If you come and choose an ability that somebody already has and nobody else has it, it'll automatically select that entity for you so that it makes sense. So it's all about convenience here. Um, these are all just little convenience factors that make your life easier. So then you have a summon. You can summon, um, you know, pretty much any entity in the game. Uh, you can make them controlled autonomously. You can make them stationary. Like if you're summoning a turret, that also scales their power. Again, you can make it something that's random. You can summon from a list. All of these options are available to you. And of course, you can create your own uh, summons. And you have transform, which is the same. You're going to be able to transform into any entity that you create. So we did the hurt, we did the create. Uh, I'm not gonna touch on all of these too deeply, but the action points you can give, you can take, and you can siphon AP, um, which is very useful. 
All of these imbues are basically going to be uh, a buff, or is what you can consider them, that do this thing based on damage. So if you imbue damage, that means if I deal any kind of damage and I imbued fire damage, I'm gonna do extra fire damage. Dispelling gives you a chance to dispel, kill gives you a chance to kill, and statistics add statistics or statuses like stuns, dazes, confuses, all those things. So that's what this is down here. The statistic action is an actual buff or debuff, you can control it here. Um, and this is all of the statistics in the game that you can choose from. So you can set, uh, you know, mobility, anything from mobility to you know, mind power, whatever it might be. All of this is automatically balanced to make sense. So obviously, um, you know, if you go heavily into one type of power, it's going to be very convenient for you because you're going to gain a lot of that power. However, if you run into somebody with that defense, that defense is going to be very powerful as well since it's more specific. So now we're down here still under modify status. This is going to be your stuns, dazes, confuses, etc., etc. And your steal statistic is basically what it implies. You're going to take the statistic from the entity. So there I would steal, um, let's say, armor penetration. So I'm going to steal 348 armor penetration for one turn from this entity. Of course, this is a pretty high AP ability at this point or something like that would be more... Uh, common. So 209 armor penetration from the entity. However, if the entity doesn't have that armor penetration uh, above the normal, above the standard, then you won't be able to steal it. So that's the, the downside to um, steal, uh, uh, is that it only really works if they have that as a strength. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> then now we have the move abilities. So you have move self, that's just sort of for jumps and teleports. Uh, and then you have the move target, that's for pushes and pulls. Orients are to sort of turn, spin the, the enemy around or, you know, draw them to you, whatever it might be. And then the swap position action is just like a teleport for both you and the enemy where you just change positions. Protect, you can put up shields like absorb. Uh, guard means that all of the damage or a percentage of the damage that that entity was going to receive is actually going to go to you. You can see it's very cheap to do this, so it's a very good way for your tank to work. Um, you can have your tank or, you know, the, the damage sponge guard your weaker characters. Um, you know, our paladin does that in, in an area of effect, and it's very effective. Um, then we're going to see the heal actions, which is just what you'd think. You can also do the heals over time and the heal percentages, which work just off percentage of HP. So you can do some really neat things where you buff the statistics like, you know, your, your health there, and then you heal yourself percentage HP. So it's, it's quite, quite a nice combination. And, at, and finally, we have the removes. We have dispel and purge, which just basically remove um, buffs and debuffs. Uh, then you have the Purify Tile action that removes traps and fields. It's very cheap to do, um, so it's very effective. Uh, and then the uh, Transfer Effects. That's kind of like I'm going to, you know, give you like it's like a Plague Touch ability where I'm going to uh, give you all of the negatives that I have. I'm going to transfer them on to you or you can steal, uh, you know, magic from them. Now the conditions are Allegiance. That's just, is he an ally or an enemy? Uh, HP comparison, do they have more or less HP than you? Statistic comparison is the same way, except for statistic, do they have more or less mobility than you? The cumulative, um, you have ability activations condition. This is really how much AP you've used, as I showed you there before. So if I used 5 AP, now I can do it. All of these things are consumed, so damage dealt condition, right? If I have 50, I can do. I can go up to like 1,000 damage here. So I have to deal 1,000 damage before I can activate this ability, and then now... I'm going to, I don't know, let's say do a combo finisher here. So I, if I've dealt that much uh, damage, I can now use this to finish my combo, do 168 damage, right? That's going to be consumed, so I'd have to start over again. Uh, this is how all of the cumulative uh, uh, bill, uh, conditions work. So then you have the damage received condition, which is self-explanatory, I think. Uh, the healing condition, how much healing you've done. Kills, how many kills you've you have actually done not just how many have happened and then the movement condition how how many spaces have you moved so that's why this is called ability activations condition instead of ap used because you use ap to move but this one only counts the uh, abilities 
AP, the, 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 uh, the AP consumed by abilities. <clears throat> so then we go to the independent ones. This is if you have a dot, a damage over time. Um, if you have a status, like if you're stunned or if the target is stunned rather. So this would be a way that you would dispel a stun very easily. It would say only if the uh, entity is stunned do you dispel. So it'd be very powerful. Uh, or more powerful rather and then you have the heals over times health thresholds just basically if the if the entity is above a certain percentage of hp is summoned this is to, to sort of banish you know you'd, you'd remove uh, or you do something to a summon you can actually also say if it's summoned uh, by you um, so you'd say if summoned by me and so therefore you can have something that's a very specific buff to your summons making it quite powerful but of course not allowing you to use it on other allies. Um, then you have last move distance. So that's basically, uh, did I just move X amount of tiles? This is good for like a running flying kick or something like that. You have to have just moved a minimum of three tiles. Uh, then you have the statistic threshold condition. <clears throat> that's the same thing as the health, but with statistics. This is how you add a random chance. So here you just add a 50% chance. You can only go down to 25% and up to 90. And it'll just give you a little power multiplier there um, for your uh, abilities. And then spatial, so environmental surroundings. This is if you're next to walls, if you're next to props, things like that. Numbers of target and condition, this, this is for AE abilities. So it's like if I, I was using a chain lightning ability, am I gonna have more than one target or three targets in my uh, chain lightning, so then the chain lightning can activate or do extra damage. Positions relative to target, this is how you do your, say, nose punch or backstab. That I have to be in the front or in the back or even the flanks of the enemy. Uh, and then surrounding entities condition, are there enemies around me, are there allies around me? So this is, you know, for some like pack mentality, etc, etc. And then the reactions uh, are here. So we have uh, on ability activation reaction. This is very, very common. And I just want to touch on one of these so that we can see what it's like. You have a chance to react that's just sort of native here to add a little bit of randomness if you wanted it. Um, you can have it happen before basically begins to activate or activates after. Um, you can respond to hostile abilities, friendly abilities, damaging abilities, healing abilities. And then you can uh, say who's activating the abilities, uh, who's the target, and then of course who am I going to then affect? So you could do pretty much any combination you can think of there. And this target nearest open tile here is good for if you wanted to summon something. Um, for instance, like we have an ability where uh, the reaction is on movement. So on movement reaction, uh, you target open nearest tile. And then here I would put a summon. So I would summon something when someone begins to move, like put something in their way, like a block, them, block them with a just a crate or I could summon a, uh, you know, an, an entire new enemy f to, to fight them. And that enemy can have a reaction that stops them from moving. So it can get pretty complex there with reactions. Reactions are really some of the most fun in the game, in my opinion. Um, so we have a statistic change reaction. That's when statistics change or when statuses occur. Um, on turn reactions this is like when you begin or end turns within range. Health reactions, this is when things take damage. So this is after you've taken the damage, on death, on death's door. Um, the difference there being one of them you will die, the other one you can still save yourself. Uh, on heal reaction, on heal uh, threshold reaction, on health threshold reaction. So that's when it crosses a threshold and the, the on heals of course when something is healed. And then you have the orientation reactions. This is if something turns to you uh, and then on positioning um, reaction that's just all spatial there and so that's basically all of the things that you can do currently we will almost certainly continue to add to this as people request and, and as we continue to develop um, but that is the entirety of the tools at your disposal that can be as I said combined in any way as long as you uh, adhere to the four slots there um, so so that's basically our tool and uh, if you have any questions, um, we welcome your questions on Discord. So please join us. I'll have a link uh, underneath the video. And have a very happy holidays or just a happy week, day, or weekend, whenever you may be watching this. Thanks.